Welcome back to the Global Indian Podcast, home to the greatest conversations and the official platform for open and liberal minds. Yes, let's face it, we are everywhere. Now, as you know, every single week we plunge ourselves into the human experience behind our perceptions of identity, take a second look at the countries that people of Indian origin call home, and tackle the big conversations. Well, this week, virtually, of course, I travelled all the way down to New Zealand. Not only do I get beaten up by the Fijian, Fijian rugby players in the UK, but this time I get to travel over and understand more about the concept of identity in a nation. Now, just to put the figures out there, when you have a look at Fiji, New Zealand and Australia, there's almost over half a million people of Indian origin there. And many of these communities call that place home over the course of 67 generations. So it's a really interesting mindset. Now, to help guide me through this process of identity, I'm joined by Aisha Khan, who not only has set up her own blog, having a look at these deeper questions, but is also helping the Global Indian series plunge ourselves even further on that corner of the planet. So without further ado, Aisha, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So Aisha, I suppose the first question is, what's it like to be you? In regards to being Fiji Indian? I suppose in just regards to you being you at this moment in time in New Zealand, because you've got, you're from Fiji, you're obviously got that ethnicity of being person of Indian origin, and you're living in New Zealand. And so I almost see that 50 shades of Pacific brown right now. Like what, what's it like on that side of the world? I feel very blessed to live in a country where diversity is celebrated and valued. At the same time, it's been a lot of internal strife almost to kind of figure out who am I? Because around me, people seem to have very secure identities. And I always felt a bit odd, like the odd one out, even in a place where diversity cultural diversity is celebrated and valued. I always felt like, and I still today feel like I always have to explain myself and my culture. And I think being in my mid twenties now, I didn't think I would still be feeling a bit insecure about my identity and my culture. So it's really been I'm in the middle of a process of really figuring that out. What what does it mean to you? What does your culture mean to you? My culture means everything to me, basically. It really is my foundation. It's my crux. And I don't know why that is. Uh, when I started doing what I was doing, a lot of people were like, it's great, but why? Why start something like this? It's so time consuming. I spend my weekends, uh, a lot of weekends dedicated to it. So why? I feel like there are a lot of misconceptions about us as a people. And I felt like as a millennial, I had a lot to say. And that's really what I, I felt like I could give that back to my culture. What What is the biggest misconception that you feel people have around the experience of South Asians, especially of people of Indian origin in those islands in the Pacific? From my personal experience, I feel like there's a bit of general racism towards us. Uh, being Fiji Indian, it feels like we've kind of always been looked down upon or kind of been secluded. And I feel like we've always had to really fight for our right to be where we are. And that kind of sucks in a way, because I don't feel like we should have to. Looked down upon by whom? Is that the local communities there? The... I think in Fiji, there has been a lot of, a lot of cultural strife for the past how many years now so that today i think has internalized as just internalized racism and baggage and it it's like conditioning in a way and you can't teach people to not be racist 
See, this is an interesting question because when you look back at Fiji, it's had some of the worst areas of violence, especially when it comes against the Indian community. You had a coup, the anti-Indian coup that it was known as. And, you know, when most people outside of the country or even the region look at the country, you think sun, sea, sand, and maybe um, Vijay Singh, the golf player. But obviously there's a lot more going down on this. So what, run me through, what was it like growing up then as a Fijian Indian? Um, you said that there was internalized racism. What does that feel like in a nation like that? I think growing up in New Zealand, I lucked out a lot because I myself never dealt firsthand with that racism. Uh, one of the reasons that my parents migrated from New Zealand uh, to New Zealand from Fiji was because of the coups. And even today, that's not really talked about. You know, the why behind why did you migrate is not really talked about. I think it's that baggage is very internalized and I think for me, I only realized that there's these feelings, negative feelings, when I got much older, when I started to become a bit conscious about how people look at us. It's fascinating because you you obviously from Fiji origins, or Indian origins, Fiji from Fiji to New Zealand, this has had a huge impact on you, enough for you to set up at the Gurmitya Diaries to have a look at bringing these stories together. And I suppose that burning question is, okay, well, what part of your identity do you feel that has been impacted here? Is it your parents' experience ultimately that's rubbing off on you? Or is it something else that you're seeing that you say, well, hang on, there's a bit of injustice here that we need to fight against? I suppose the question you know is, again, what you've been asked is why? <laughs> because it's like, when I have a look at your platform, the work that you've done, you know, there's a lot of dedication towards the craft of saying, let me build this encyclopedia of experiences of the Gurmitias, who essentially are the indentured workers that went over to places like Fiji. And they came over from India. And this was at the time of the British Raj. So it was colonialism that brought these guys over, often working on sugarcane sites. And what most people don't realize is what they went through was another film of slavery. And it was yeah. harsh conditions. People died yeah. in the boats, people died there. And in some cases, they had to have a passport to leave their uh, plantation by up to a mile. So these were really dire circumstances. You know, when you say it like that, I feel like there's pain or trauma or like generational trauma in my bloodline. And because of what my ancestors went through and I don't think any child signs up to have generational trauma in their lives it it just is and it's a bit of a complex feeling because one I didn't sign up for this feeling but I can't help but feel extremely hollow and extremely sad that you know I have a lot of friends who can trace back their family lineage like generations and generations. And I can only trace back my lineage to my great grandparents who were the laborers. And even then we don't know the names because the names were corrupted because of colonialism. So they weren't spelt correctly. So even if I do find a name or like a passport, an immigration passport online of what could be theirs, it's still like, how do I know it was actually them? You know, so it's almost like having no record of my own ancestors. So it's a very hollow feeling. And that feeling really led to me creating this page. What have been some of the bigger discoveries that you've made whilst having that page set up? I know it sounds very simple, but I think it's the fact that other people feel the same way that I do. I... I'm very lucky to have very supportive friends who support me with this and they understand why. But, you know, your friends don't necessarily need to feel the same way you do. You know, everyone's entitled to feel how they feel. So somewhere I felt that nobody really understood how I felt. So having anonymous people reach out and say, hey, you know, I've grown up feeling the exact same way as you. 
that was huge. And kind of finding a community. Like, I always knew that community was there, but finding a community that's actually conscious about this stuff, that's been huge. And connecting with other people who kind of do similar things to me and learning about their experiences. Because in a way, even though I grew up in in a very culturally diverse place, I wasn't really aware of what other indentured laborers went through in other countries. It just wasn't in my radar. So this page has led to me finding that out and it's like, wow, we had similar experiences. So it was like this feeling of euphoria in a very weird way. Yeah, it's almost this collective exposure because it's saying, well, it's not in one way, it wasn't just a Fijian experience. It was those guys that went to Guyana, Trinidad, St. Lucia, or South yeah. Africa, um, right the way across the planet. But the brutality of that is something that people haven't often recorded. It's been almost neglected. Like on your side, because it's obviously a very painful subject, and which is a good thing because that's what's led you to have that passion to actually do something about it. But it's really interesting because it's in this internalized racism and this feeling of being hollow because you don't know where the generations are from. Is that changing over time? Or is it just kept in being swept under the carpet, which means it almost continues to fester? I think it continues to fester. I I don't know if it's ever going to change, to be very honest. It just, it is what it is. And I think I accepted that a long time ago. Is your interest for your own identity, is it this whole idea of Indianness or is it the idea of India? Because it's two very separate identities that are there. You know, when I was younger, I, because of this feeling of being the odd one out, even though I was mostly surrounded by Fiji Indians, uh, in my personal environments, I still felt like the odd one out and I kind of almost craved to be in the Indian and like I almost craved validation from them in a very weird messed up way because I felt so out of place and I think that's one of the reasons why I attached so strongly to Bollywood because I was like hey that's my culture you know that's what we're all about but then the attitudes from the other party has always been, you're not Indian enough. You're not Indian. Like, what's what's your case? And I'm like, I'm Muslim. I don't have a case. Anywhere you go in Fiji, nobody talks about caste, whether you're Muslim or Hindu or whatever. And as I started to become more conscious about it, I was like, I would... I'm going to have more validation in accepting my own culture and learning about my own culture than craving validation from the other party. So and I really don't mean to shade them or put them down or anything. It's just, I know that a lot of people have had this experience. That's interesting because it's, it's, it's not about India anymore. You know, that's that's yeah. there, is in the background somewhere. It's a, it's, a, it's a country, but it's about this concept of Indianness. It's about us as people of Indian origin right the way across the planet. And the moment we start looking at each other rather than just blindly looking towards the nation is the moment we start seeing a lot of real change because it's saying these are the stories that impact people at this moment in time. I suppose there's a weird word about an Indian diaspora because you feel almost you're still having ownership from a country almost like a pope-like figure that is a figurehead but yeah. the reality is people you you move your conscious citizens in the back of the planet so therefore you carry this notion of what your cultural identity is or affiliations but it's so much more deeper than being held into one country now it's um the, it's it's interesting about the racial issues that you said in fiji obviously you're now in new zealand but how bad was it for your parents? Because you said they moved over when the coup was taking place or because of the coups? The coup was one of the reasons that they moved. And they also felt that they would they had a they had a young family at the time. My siblings were all very young and they felt that my siblings would have a more secure future in a country like New Zealand. But 
they have never openly talked about their experiences as Indians in Fiji. Very honestly, nobody in my family has, and I don't think they will. And if I can speak for them, I think that the not talking about it is sort of a typical Indian thing of just shoving things under the rug type thing. Um, and I think also it's an immense feeling of gratitude to live in Fiji despite everything uh, because Fiji is home for us. It's where the base is. You know, it's where my grandparents created a base for us. They had a very tough, but if I have a home in Fiji or if I feel that feeling of home, it is because Fiji opened its arm for us. So I sometimes feel like it wouldn't be right for me to go up to them and kind of open up conversations about things that may be very painful for them, even though it should be talked about. I was going to say, Fiji means something to you, and Fiji means something to your friends. Do you feel that you mean anything to Fiji? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I really cannot answer that question besides maybe every once in a while, maybe being a tourist and adding to the economy in that way. I, I don't know. Um. I mean, I know to my family, whenever I visit, I am, you know, a granddaughter coming home to visit. Um, but besides that, I, I don't really know. I, I cannot answer that question. Is there part of you that when you have a look at your own identity, obviously you've got this concept of Indianness there. Um, and Bollywood is a great example of saying, actually, this validates it's people that look like us on a screen yeah. that sound like yeah. this to a degree. So you feel, oh, wow, um, it, it's a great resource to have, especially if you're in a country where everything else almost is identifiable towards you as being the issue and the problems that the nation's facing. Um, so there's that aspect. But then is there a part of you that feels Fijian? Is there a part of you that you can say, okay, yeah, that's that's my Indo-Fijian experience. That is my Indo-Fijian identity. Very honestly, that journey has begun very recently. Uh, because up until I started the page, I wanted to be Indian. So the page really is a result of me being indo -Fidian. It's accepting that I have a beautiful culture that is an amalgamation, really, of two very beautiful cultures. And... It's kind of up to me to explore both sides of it equally because I don't think it's fair if I just focus on being Indian. Even though my ancestors came from India, they settled in Fiji. So I owe it in a way to myself and my family to explore the Fiji inside. And it hasn't been easy because I honestly don't know how to go about that because I obviously don't live in Fiji, so it's not like I can be like, okay, hey, tell me about your culture. It's not straightforward, but it's I'm I'm working on it. What are you searching for, Aisha? You're really making me deep dive, huh? Did you know I feel like I've I've been just type of therapy <laughs> session and it's, it's not was, meant to be, but it's like I was just gonna say for? that it's like a bloody therapy session now. <laughs> but uh, um no, I I think I'm searching for, I know that I have a home, but I think I'm searching for that internal acceptance so, and validation within myself. So is it those experiences of seeing what other people have gone through to almost make sense of yourself to say, here's my externalized exposure. Now it makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I had to sum it up, I would sum it up that way. It is absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Because, you know, the work that you've done has almost led you down this, again, this kaleidoscope of the journeys of this huge community, especially those who came down to Fiji, then obviously subsequently based like Australia and New Zealand. Now, there is a difference because when you have a look at 
Australia, New Zealand, you've also got a huge number of people straight from India as yeah. well that live there. What's yeah. that like for you? Because is it is there this hierarchy of Indianness that starts to appear or are there different camps that are coming together? And what's it like for those other generations that start coming through? For me, personally, it's kind of like othering. Like, we're here and we are going to be here. So even if I go to an Indian clothing store to buy clothes, the first I can tell the first thing they're doing is figuring out whether I'm Indian Indian or I'm Fiji Indian. And it's such a normal thing, but they, from my experience, they treat you differently. Like one is they look at how much money do you, do you have? And the second is, okay, are they Indian Indian or Fiji Indian? So I feel like if you're Indian Indian, they kind of give you this preferential treatment if the store is owned by India Indians and if you're Fiji Indian it's like oh yeah we'll serve you after so it's it's very small things like that but they're like microaggressions in a way that we almost that a lot of Fiji Indians feel on a daily basis in a progressive country like New Zealand like it's it is very disappointing because it just reaffirms that you don't think that we're Indian enough what happens in the opposite if you go to a store that is indo fijian owned does the opposite it's, happen or no it's it's the in a way it's the flip side in a good way because they're like okay where in fiji are you from and there's no, no questions of what, hierarchy what, what about the indian indian does he does that person have to wait or are they treated equally the same no i i would you like to say no i cannot speak for yeah. them but i think there is that feeling of knowing you know when you walk into a fiji indian store you you know that you're gonna be treated in a certain way that's so fascinating and how, how does it feel for you because you've obviously got this new communities from india that have arrived in new zealand and the figures are huge, They're outstanding. Same thing with Australia there. Um, does that question of religion in India come up for you? Yeah, it does. There's, there's, there's uh, a big sigh there. So I feel like there's a lot to, <laughs> un to uncover. Um, I, I actually just had a conversation with my mom today uh, about one of the events uh religious events that my dad celebrates and my mom doesn't because my mom feels like it's come from India and it's more of an Indian cultural thing and it's not a religious thing so we shouldn't be celebrating it but I you know I don't necessarily celebrate this thing but I go along with the bandwagon of it because it's a community thing it's a family thing for me it's not a religious thing so there are a lot of differences in how maybe Indo-Fijian Muslims do things and how India Indian Muslims do things and I'm not saying one is right and one is wrong uh there is just a lot of differences how interesting because you, you're starting to look at the religion and then you're having a look at the culture and saying well what dictates the way in which we view our lives and ultimately it's the experiences that we have on the planet which will dictate the way that we experience a religion and so yeah. therefore when you start looking at those little kaleidoscopes those little pieces it becomes really fascinating what what i have to ask what is that celebration that you're discussing oh it's uh it's called milad and nabi uh and it's basically from my understanding celebrating the birth of our last prophet uh and it's a highly contested uh event because ultimately as muslims we're told not to celebrate birthdays and not to put too much emphasis on that so the fact that maybe some people are celebrating the prophet's birthday when he said not to is kind of like he he told us not to but uh to me it's uh to each their own and uh i you know, honestly, I think one of my relatives' birthday is around the same time. So he ends up having an event 
and in, and includes the prophets. I'm like shading my own family now, but it it's not so for it's, me personally. It's, it's, it's more of a community thing. It's more of a yeah. You know, let's let's celebrate as human beings and find yeah, for find me, those it is. moments in time. Yeah, I, I think for the elders, it may be more of a religious thing. Uh, for me personally, it is more of a community thing where the whole family shows up. Uh, people from our village in Fiji show up. So it's more of that end of the year meeting people. Let's socialize kind of thing for me. That's interesting. And then in, in Fiji, for example, would it be all religions that all friends and family that will come together? Or is it mainly predominantly the Muslim community there? I have not had the experience of celebrating many events in Fiji, so I can't no. speak to that. But my parents have talked a lot about how they would attend. Uh, you know, the Ramayana events where they yeah. would do the plays. Uh, my parents would attend those and then they would go home and pray with their parents. So and they would give sweets to their Hindu neighbors. And that's something that we do here. So I think uh, I have been raised with that certain uh, level of respect for other religions. And uh, I, I think I think maybe that ha is still persistent in Fiji. I hope so. That's so interesting, isn't it? It's it's the way in which we view it. And with no, did, I, I feel like I could ask you quite question after question after question, as you probably realize, Asha, but it's, um, well, what is it that you want to leave with the audience? Because this is ultimately a deep dive into you. Your experiences are absolutely fascinating, especially when it comes to finding one's identity. I suppose finding one's identity gives you that, for you in particular, that feeling of stability of knowing this is who I am, which means then I kind of know where I'm heading to as well because you've got stable feet to hold on to. B, what are your final thoughts that you want to share with people? I would like... I, I wish that we would give each other more space to discover ourselves when it comes to culture and identity especially if you have a family history like mine there is a lot of trauma a lot of pain that our families have been through and we need to give each other that respect and that space to just feel feelings and not be too quick to judge people for what they are feeling and how they may react to certain things I think we have to remember that we're all learning and as someone who does what I do uh, nothing means more to me than people understanding the fact that I am human and I'm just learning as I go I think there's, that's probably the best way to sum it up Aisha thank you so much for coming on the show I think it's is a great uncovering there. And I look forward to doing a lot more stuff with you on that side of the world. And bringing, Same here. And, and, and bringing, I suppose, that consciousness to our understanding of what makes us human, the role that identity plays, but more importantly, almost connecting those vessels together. Speak to you soon. Thank you.